factor is said to be constant if both its magnitude and direction do not change. What do you mean by a magnitude? Magnitude means the length of the vector. So if the length of the vector and the direction do not change, that vector is constant vector. And a vector will change if either its magnitude changes or direction changes or both magnitude and direction change. Then in this case, your vector will change. Some of the remarks are given. First one is magnitude of a vector is the length of a vector. How to calculate a length of a vector? So let's read the second remark. If vector v is given to be minus 2i plus 5j where i and j are the unit vectors, right? Then its magnitude is norm of v, which is equal to you take the square of the first component that is minus 2 plus the square of the second component that is 5. So it's 5 square under the root which is equal to under the root of 29. Third one is if a vector is equal to its components are given as a1, a2, a3 and b vector is equal to the components are b1, b2, b3 then if you take the dot product of these two vectors, you will get a1, b1 plus a2, b2 plus a3, b3. And for the cross product, you have to solve the determinant of the kind. You take in the first column i and their components a1, b1. Then in the second column, the second components with j, that is a2, b2. Then the third components with k, which is a3, b3. So just solve this determinant, you will get the value for the A cross B, right? Fourth one is, if theta is the angle between A vector and B vector, then their dot product is equal to mod A vector into mod B vector cos of theta. And fifth one is, dot product of A vector, B vector are orthogonal, Orthogonal means perpendicular if and only if their dot product is equal to zero. That means if the vectors are perpendicular to each other, then their dot product is zero. And then the other way, if the dot product is zero, this means these are orthogonal vectors. That means A vector dot B vector are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other. Right? Next. Because in that case, your cos of theta will be cos 90 degree and cos 90 degree is 0. Now the theorem. The necessary and sufficient condition for ft to be constant is df by dt is equal to 0. Now we have to prove the both the way. If the vector f is constant, then I have to prove df by dt is equal to 0. And the other way also I have to prove that if df by dt is equal to 0, then I need to prove that f vector is constant. Right? So let's start with the proof. Suppose I take first your f vector to be a constant vector and I have to prove that df by dt is equal to 0. So let's take, suppose f vector is a constant vector what is the condition for a constant vector yes then yes what is the condition for the constant vector we know that if the vector is constant this means if we take f of t plus h, then this will be equal to simply f t for all h. This is the condition for the constant vector. This implies f of t plus h, take f of t to the other side. This will be equal to 0. Therefore, df by dt is equal to limit h tends to 0 we know that this is f of t plus h minus f of t over 
h. Now because f of t plus h minus f of t is equal to 0. So we put 0 in the numerator. We get whole thing to be equal to 0. So we get ds by dt is equal to 0. Which implies df over dt is equal to 0. I have used the definition for the derivative of f vector here which is limit h tends to 0 f of t plus h minus f of t over h. Use the definition, put the value from the given conditions. So one way is proved, which is a required necessary condition. Which is the required necessary condition. Now, for the other way, for the sufficient condition, right? So, conversely, suppose df by dt equal to 0, this is given to you. I need to prove that f vector is constant. Now, let's take our f vector to be equal to <clears throat> f1 t unit vector i plus f2 t unit vector j plus f3 t unit vector k. Right? f1, f2, f3 are the components of this f vector. Now, what is given to us? It is given to us that df vector over dt is equal to 0, which means we take the derivative on both the sides. So, df by dt is equal to 0 for the left hand side, which means if we take the derivative on the right hand side, then this whole derivative will be equal to 0 because df by dt is 0. So, taking the derivative on both the sides, so this will be df1 over dt <coughs> plus df2 over dt unit vector j plus df3 over dt unit vector k. Now this is 0. df1 over dt unit vector i df2 over dt unit vector j plus df3 over dt unit vector k. Can you compare your 0 to be as 0i plus 0j plus 0k? Right? Just compare the components. So you will get first component df1 by dt to be equal to 0. Right? Then df2 by dt is also 0. Then df3 by dt is equal to 0. So just comparing the components. So from here we get df1 over dt is equal to 0. df2 over dt is equal to 0. Then df3 over dt is equal to 0 which means Whenever you are having the derivative of any function to be equal to 0, that means that function is constant. So, uh, this implies that f1 vector, sorry, this should be because f1 is a function of t, f1 t, f2 t, f3 t. These are constant vectors. Now, f1 t, f2 t, f3 t, these are constant vectors, which means f t is constant, right? So, this implies vector f is constant vector. Hence, the condition is sufficient.
dan 